So welcome, Dave Fishwick from M&G Investments uh, with a global macro hedge fund. Happy to have you here. Nice to be here. So um, you have a global macro perspective uh, on the market at the moment, and I, and I guess there's a lot to do. Uh, um, a lot of things happened uh, the last the last month and year. Um, so we see inflation rates going up uh, in all of Europe and and of course the US. We see. Uh, Kind of struggling in the um, econo economic uh, uh, in, in Germany uh, due to the fact that a lot of energy prices rise and all the stuff. Um, how how do you handle and well, how is your global perspective for the for the near future? What what will what are we going to see? Okay, so I think what we saw over the past 12 uh, months or 18 months has been a an inflation surprise, as you say targeted slightly through energy prices, but actually a bit more generic than that. And that kind of caught central banks off guard somewhat, because they thought that this would pass through the system more quickly. Uh, and as a consequence, you've seen interest rates rise pretty meaningfully. So one of the more dramatic phases of monetary tightening we've seen in a very long time. And so the big question, I think, in terms of the economics is, how does this feed through of the inflation into a a, a, a transitory, even if it took longer, episode, or do you see a more differential situation from what we've been in for the last 15 years? So one of the big questions, I think, from a macro perspective, is the interplay between the inflation onto economic growth and what is the policy response to that. Pretty much the last 10, 15 years, any time anything has gone wrong, central banks have been able to ease monetary policy. Uh, the, the problem when you have inflation dynamics is you can't do that. You can't credibly do that at the first kind of sign of trouble. So that's a difficult situation that central banks find themselves in, and there are cracks appearing as a consequence of monetary tightening. So you're seeing the banking stuff that's happened, but you can also see some housing and some commercial property dynamics, which look slightly worrying. Now, if you kind of then think about for markets, well, you've seen a big adjustment in bond yields higher to levels that historically have kind of been not bad to invest in at that point in time. Equity assets have done surprisingly well in a lot of people's eyes, and that's been to do with profitability. Uh, but again, valuations have become a little richer of late. And so I would say today markets are pretty well calibrated. Most people can kind of tell you about the different paths that the economy might go on. And markets look like they've balanced those pretty sensibly. So if you want to be really bearish about growth and say inflation is going to weaken, you kind of know what to do with a portfolio. But then there's the other scenario of more persistent inflation dynamics and resilience in economic growth, which kind of give you a very different view about what you should do with portfolios. So I would say markets are about as well calibrated and balanced as I've seen them in a very long time. Mm -hmm. But we have a new we have a new influ influence that wasn't that wasn't a long time not there. That was uh, that we had a stable low price for energy, and now energy is unpredictable. So we have now this impact of alternative investments in solar and wind and everything. Uh, but the winter will come for sure. Solar has not this power anymore, um, and uh, we see our economy is looking for uh, other places to produce, especially in Germany. Yeah. Oh, how do you how do you identify this as a, a, a possible um, a possible problem, or isn't it a problem at all? I think um, what it suggests is that inflation volatility is going to be higher than we've been used to. So we've been been able to assume pretty much post two thousand and six seven eight um, that inflation would look after itself, and as I said, you can then respond to economic downdrafts by easing monetary policy. A more inflation volatile environment causing problems for policymakers suggests to me that uh, for markets, um, you, you'd be asking for more risk premium. You'd expect asset markets to reflect that economic uncertainty and potential risk and do what they didn't do for much of the last 10, 15 years, which is to trade slightly cheaper. So if you kind of think about where bonds got to in 2016 uh, and again in 2020, you were looking at 
negative nominal yields, let alone real yields. And equity assets got pretty expensive in 2021 because your competing rate of return was a cash rate of zero or negative. And so that higher level of uncertainty, and some of these things are structural. So this energy question is not just a cyclical mm. supply chain issue, it is a structural dynamic uh, based around societal choices, policymakers' choices, um, and that suggests it's not temporary. So as a consequence, those influences, to me at least, they suggest the potential for a regime shift, mm -hmm. which means you have to think about how to price assets differently for much of the last 10, 15 years. Okay. And perhaps last question. Um, so we saw after COVID, China had a, had a, a, a decrease in, in, in economic up, uh, um, um, growth. Yeah. So and still is a little bit behind uh, the growth numbers, but everybody was expecting that the growth numbers of uh, China go down uh, due to the fact that they have so many uh, uh, developed. But is it an advantage that China and the relationships to Russia are still so good, and the production of electricity and the rest is uh, so cheap for them? Do you think that that um, uh, this market will uh, take over? The, the, the global role of production in the near future? That's one possibility. I think there are some questions about the policy framework and the business environment, which are a bit of a counter to that. So again, I think governments setting the regulatory framework and the flexibility historically has been a, a, a strong driver of whether economies do well or not. And I think certainly you've had this volatility in the asset markets, which reflects an uncertainty around what is the government's attitude towards these things. So in terms of a deterrent to investment, that's still a material risk. So <clears throat> access to cheap energy and other inputs is a big positive, but I think the um, there are some negatives in and around the policy framework. Thank you very much. And so taking over leadership in the world's, world's economic growth, uh, as, as I said, it's possible, but there are risks to that as well. Coming to your fund, finally, it's uh, what you're also here for. Your fund is available in Germany as well? Yes, it is, yeah. What kind of investor are you looking for? A long-term investor? Is it, is it uh, institutional investor, private clients? What? So we actually manage the strategy for various investors, so retail investors and institutional. Uh, the largest amount of money we, we still run for our ex-parent company, the Prudential of the UK. The, in terms of the time horizon, uh, it isn't a trading fund in the way that some macro hedge funds are. It kind of can go anywhere. Uh, it, it isn't a super volatile portfolio. Over the life of the strategy, it's delivered kind of 10 percentage points of return per annum with similar types of volatility. So it doesn't have monumental swings in value. And it's a reactive strategy. So it, it, uh, it waits for what we call episodes. Mm -hmm. So episodes of volatility, it's, it street strikes uh, a chance of trying to exploit corrections in markets as well as some medium term themes Uh, which are driven by valuation analysis, as well as this concept of rapid phases of volatility that we try and exploit. And uh, last but not least, it is global macro hedge. So what is what's the, the hedge part in your fund? Yeah, so again, um, we, when we're trying to construct these portfolios, we don't put elements in there just because they might be a hedge. So all of the positions kind of make sense in their own right. But in terms of allocating capital to those themes, the likely correlation of things matters a lot to us. So last year, everything was positively correlated. So in a sense, the hedge was being short of things. Um, so that, again, is an important part of the fund. It can make money out of things going down as well as things going up. Um, but certainly, if we have a forward-looking view that certain things are likely to be negatively correlated, that provides a hedge and a smoothing to the portfolio's return. Thank you very much, Dave. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.